Welcome to Specific Love. Here are 20 tips and tricks for your workshop. Let's begin. Now if you have a wood shop, then you're gonna have sawdust everywhere. And it can be a pain to clean up, especially off the floor. Now, if you take your shop back and you use your attachment that is meant for water, this is actually a great trick to help you collect all that sawdust off the floor really quickly. If you happen to have one of these old bench vices, these things are great if you're holding metal, but if you're trying to hold any kind of wood, stick it in here and you crank down on it, there's a very good chance that the metal sides here are gonna scar up your wood, and that's just gonna create more work for you. So, an easy way to fix this is just to take some wood pieces that you have, some scrap, and you cut it out so that it'll fit right in here on this main unit. You can then, wrench down about as hard as you want on this wood, and you don't have to worry about it scarring up the sides. If you ever try to use your miter gauge on your table saw, whenever you're trying to make your cuts, there's a good chance that your wood's gonna move around just a little bit. And if you're trying to be really precise, that little movement can just mess you up. Well, I have a great way to fix that. You can easily take one of your sanding pads that has a sticky back, cut it out, stick it on the front of your miter gauge. Then when you put your wood on the face, you don't have to worry about that moving at all. You ever had a piece of wood you're trying to work with but it has a crack right on the end but you really want to use this piece? Well, let me show you how to easily glue this back together. First off, go rummage through your bathroom and find some dental floss, pull off a nice long strip, and then get you some wood glue. First off, I have threaded the dental floss into the crack here. And then when you want to take some glue, you want to put a nice bead right along that crack. Then we want to take the dental floss and you want to carefully as you're moving it down the board, you want to move it through it, back and forth, like so. And that is going to carefully get that glue down in that surface. Now once you have glue thoroughly down in that crack, wipe off the excess, take a clamp, clamp it together, and just give it some time to dry. Whenever you're working with plywood to make furniture, it's always a good idea to try and cover up this nasty looking edge just so it has a little bit more beauty. In that case, you use some veneer edging here. Now, normally you have to have some specialty tools for this. One, you have to have an iron, but then you have to have a specialty roll on just to make sure everything's pressed in place. Well, here's a simple way to save some money on that. This is just a four inch paint roller. I had a wooden spool and I just put some tape on here to keep it from falling off along with the washer. You can easily roll on your veneer edging. Great way to save some money and simple way to make it. Whenever you have cutoffs when you're making a project, always keep those small, long pieces. They, they make some great scrap pieces of wood. These can be used for leveling, for filling in gaps, or even just stirring your paint. So save all those pieces and store them away because you will find use for them. Q-tips are a great tool to keep in your shop. They're great for cleaning, especially to get down those real small little cracks. All those little fibers can grab out that mess that you're trying to clean up. All right, here I have an industrial size strength version of them that come with wooden sticks. These are great for hobbies, for automobiles, or for any kind of tools you're trying to get into. You can find these online. I'll put a link to those in the description. Otherwise, keep some Q-tips in your shop. Whenever you're trying to stain or seal off one of your projects, you sometimes you'll need some standoffs. Instead of going out and buy some, let me show you how to make some real easily. First, get you some scrap wood. These are about three inches wide. We wanna drill some pilot holes and put in some drywall screws. Yes, I know drywall screws are usually not good for woodworking, but in this case, they work great. Make sure they're protruding through the top by at least a half an inch, and you can easily rest your wood surface on there with little contact from these screws. An alternative to that would be using some wooden dowels, maybe in some two by fours, or also in some one bys. Whenever you're cutting plywood, especially big sheets of it, whether with a circular saw or a miter saw, there's a good chance you're gonna have a nasty piece of tear out on the side. To help minimize and limit that from happening, take you some tape and put it directly over the spot where you're gonna be cutting and it should minimize that. All right, let's remove this tape and see how good it looks. There we go, much better than the other side. Whenever you're working with tweezers, maybe to put magnets or other little small objects in, sometimes these smooth surfaces can easily be 
hard to handle with those tweezers and it can easily knock them out. If you take a hot glue gun, put you just a couple dabs on the end of your tweezers, then you can grab your surface or whatever you're trying to put on and now it's a lot harder to knock those objects out. Whenever you're cutting wood, it's a good idea to grab some of that sawdust and put it in a baggie and just keep that in storage for emergencies. Whenever you're using paint or oils and say you happen to get an accidental spill, grab some of your sawdust, put it on top of it. It's a great way to help clean and absorb that up so you can easily clean it up. Whenever you're doing glue ups using a bar clamp, there's always a chance for this bar to transfer some of that material into the glue and just leave lines in all your glue marks. That is, unless you cover it with some PVC. This just happens to be some thin wall PVC and you can adjust it and cut it to the length you need or even have a couple separate pieces for longer setups. Anyway, it's a great way to do your glue ups and protect your glue from having all those marks. Whenever you're trying to glue two pieces of wood together, a silicone brush is awesome to have. Or here's a cheaper way to get one. This right here is a basting brush used normally for food, and I've cut the bristles down to probably about half of what they were from the factory. This I got from the dollar store, so only a dollar, and it is wider and just a lot more area you can cover with one glue up. Your tools, you'll have these platforms on the bottom. A lot of these will have open areas where you can accidentally drop tools and possibly even parts down in there. And if you're not careful, maybe even had some rodents make their homes. So it's a good idea to take some plywood and make a nice covering for it. And that way you don't have to worry about things getting lost inside. This one right here just happens to be open on the bottom, but you can also put some dowels in here, which will rest inside and you don't have to worry about it moving around. Great way to protect your tools. If you happen to have any little kids, it's a great idea to save their old clothing, especially if you have little boys. I have two, and they wore out their clothes, so you couldn't even give them away. You had to throw them away. But I told my wife to save them because they make great rags, whether they're socks or shirts or just about any other material that they're using. Now, I saved them, and I've actually put some of them in a PVC pipe here, and I just have this stored on my wall, so it's easy access. You can grab them and pull them out. So always save those clothing, and it's a great way to use them for rags. Anytime you're trying to glue up small pieces of wood, you still need to try and clamp them together. But using one of these big clamps is just major overkill. So grab yourself some binder clips, and that's a great way to clamp them together and wait for them to dry. All right, if you need a quick mixing surface, if you take some masking tape, you can put down a few layers of this, just overlapping about a quarter of the way so nothing will seep past it. In this case, I'm just gonna be mixing in some sawdust with some glue to fill in some gaps, but you can always do epoxy or any kind of maybe JB Weld or anything along those lines. This is a very easy way to have a mixing surface that you can then come back and clean up real easily. Whenever you're using a drill press and you're trying to drill into something small, it can move around and just be a pain. If you try to get your clamp in there, sometimes you don't have enough room. So I made this awesome little holder. In my case here, these are for pin blanks, but you can make this any size you want. It's just a two by four that I had cut down in half and just had a notch put inside. And that way I have it hinged on the ends and you can easily open and close it. You can then put your wood wherever you need it, drill out wherever you need, and that way it's an easy way to hold it. You don't have to worry about it moving around. Now here's a great way to benefit your shop and also help in the rest of your life. These are adapters that go onto your batteries. This one has a USB, this one has a USB and a plug. Just happens to be the batteries or the adapters for the batteries that I currently have. Now you don't have to go with these specific brands. Almost every major tool manufacturer out there has some type of adapter that goes on their battery. So go check out on Amazon or at the stores or even on eBay. You're bound to find something for the tools you already have. These will be great, especially if power goes out and you need to charge your phone or charge your laptop. So go grab some USB adapters. Now for number 20, I strongly suggest start hanging up your tools. If you see behind me, I have a ton of my tools. Almost all my tools actually, of the small varieties, are hanging on my walls for easy access. I'm very partial to using French cleats. I actually have a full series of French cleat ideas. I'll put a link to that in the description below if you're interested in that. Otherwise, find whatever you'd like to hang them up so you can have easy access. Now I hope some of these ideas can benefit you in your workshop. So get out there and have fun building this in storage because if you ever be 
ever be? Let's try that again. Hey, tips and trips. Trips? Little critters or, uh, not squirrels. Mice. I ton them. I'm part, oh, yeah, try it again.